Hello and welcome to something a little bit different because we're on two wheels rather than the usual four. And this is an all electric bike. It's the same sort of bike that Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Charlie Borman used to ride 13,000 miles from the southernmost tip of South America all the way up to LA for their new Apple TV Plus exclusive show, Long Way Up. Now, given that Ewan and Charlie were riding through terrain that had more venomous snakes and flesh-eating bugs than charging points, it was actually quite a big challenge. So the guys in the office said, Tim, can you go out and do your own budget low-rent version of Long Way Up? Now my trip isn't going to be nearly as long as Ewan McGregor's because I've only got a day to see how far north I can get from here on the south coast of England. Boring insurance reasons mean that we can't film after sunsets. So when the sun drops below the horizon, we'll stop and hopefully I won't be on a dismal industrial estate outside Manchester. I'll be somewhere as pretty as Patagonia. Yeah, right. <laughs> The bike I've chosen for my trip is a 2020 Harley Davidson Livewire. It's got 106 electric horsepower, 116 newton meters of torque, which, not to get too technical, is quite a lot in a bike, and it's all there from a standstill. So you can do this. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's fast. It's fast, is what it is. I've driven plenty of electric cars in the UK and they're great but they're just let down by a crap charging network and the problem's only made worse on a bike that only does 100 miles to a charge so God knows how they did 13,000 miles and zero emission vehicles through the back end of beyond their production meetings must have been incredibly stressful and probably a bit sweary The morning soon disappeared in a flurry of childish acceleration and giggling, so it was soon time to try and find the first charging point of my long way up adventure. Right, we are coming up on the first charger of our mini long way up. Is it going to be working? Where is it? I can't actually see it. Aha, I see it. Da, 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 is it working? It doesn't look like it's working. <laughs> After failing to get a charge in the desolate wastelands of Oxfordshire, I set off to see if I could find a charger that actually worked, preferably one next to a pub. If I was on my petrol-powered bike, I wouldn't be worrying about this. I'd just be dreaming of having the delicious warm Greg sausage roll. Cool, it looks like the charge is working and it's going to take about 45 minutes to get back to a full charge, which means I get 45 minutes to sit in this lovely pub and try one of everything on the menu. I think they call it the platter of shame. I get to recharge my batteries though, or my fatteries, should that be. Uh, do you reckon there's much, much more to charge on the bike? Um, it needs about another 10% to be full, but I think we've got enough to get us to Melton Mowbray so I can eat a pork pie, because this burger clearly wasn't enough. Do you want some? <laughs> <laughs> I've just seen a sign for the town of Melton Mowbray, which I know to be a place of considerable culture because it's written on the pork pies that I buy for lunch from Marks and Spencer. Now, I know you want some good English culture, so we've come to Melton Mowbray, home of the pork pie, and on its own, the pork pie is a fairly decent thing, but in my opinion, it works best as a delivery mechanism for Heinz salad cream, and yes, I realise saying this probably puts me on a government watch list of some sort, but I spoke to James May and he does the same thing. It's like a birthday cake, isn't it? There you go, just a little bit there. Mmm. Got it round my mouth. Mmm. This is too good to not share, so I think it's time for the crew to have some pork pie and salad cream. What do you think, chaps? No, I don't think they want it, which is a pity. I'm just gonna have to finish this on my own. This is really good. 
I feel like I'm in a Pan 10 advert for pies. <sighs> Boom, thank you kindly. <laughs> and this is the bit of my long way up where I outdo Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman because at no point on their trip, I don't think, did they get to eat a pastry filled with frangipan and jam? And guess what I'm about to eat? So there, in your face, Obi-Wan Kenobi, I'm gonna eat a Bakewell tart. Nah. Unfortunately, we've arrived in Bakewell far too late to actually buy an authentic Bakewell tart. But anyway, I've got two vaguely Bakewell-y things, a semi-authentic tart and the usurper, the kind of really I don't know, cheap and nasty Mr. Kipling Bakewell tart. I'm just going to do a quick taste test for you. This is the vaguely authentic one. <laughs> that is so dry. I mean, bloody hell. Imagine eating the Sahara Desert. It's a bit like that, but with a tiny, mediocre bit of jam in the base. Not good. Right, Mr. Kipling, cheap and nasty, let's go. So glamorous, I know. Uh, a lot more moist, lots of icing. That's a lot nicer. Right, crew, do you want some? No, they don't want it. If I was doing the real long way up, this would be the bit of the show where you see me disappear into a tent with an alpaca for a good night's sleep but we couldn't afford an alpaca, and I wasn't doing the real long way up, and there was more gross food to be eaten. Now we're in York, which is the home of the Yorkshire pudding, which is probably quite a bewildering concept if you're not from Britain. It's a bowl-shaped thing made of pancake batter that you have with a lovely roast dinner. But this place behind me makes a slightly more modern version, the Yorkshire pudding burrito wrap thing. It's full of meat and vegetables and gravy and I'm gonna put it into my mouth. It's not gonna be pretty and we're probably gonna to have to censor it. Here goes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that is next level deliciousness. That is one of the best things I put in my mouth in a very long time. Oh my God, this is so good. Mr. Soundman, you're gonna to have to try some. Go on, down the hatch, in one. <laughs> You're an absolute animal. <laughs> so we're coming up to the charger. Is it working? Is it working? Uh, I think I need to download an app. But this didn't happen in South America. We're getting a little bit desperate now. We are looking for, I think our fourth charger in York, because the first three, they weren't working. And it's a bring your own cable one. Bollocks. I have 21 miles. The electric charger's got a red light on it. This charger's not working. <coughs> That's gone well, hasn't it? All right, check the old phone. Get a zap map out for the millionth sign today. I see it. Right, charging time. Is it working? Please be working. Please. It's the right type. Yes! 11 miles left after that. Yay! Right, we are losing light. I'm absolutely knackered. It feels like a herd of hippos has danced on my perineum and I've eaten my body weight in absolute garbage. I need a charge as well. So things are looking a bit dismal, but hey, what a day it's been. Let's see how we go. I think this is it. The bike's nearly dead, I'm nearly dead. Where is my last charger? Oh, 
strike off. Sadly, I think that's it for today. We are out of light and it's a shame really that we have to stop for insurance reasons because I've been having a whale of a time. Yes, I know I've been taking the piss a bit with the food, but I think I've proven you can have a genuine adventure on an electric bike. You just have to shorten it a little bit. If we didn't have to be insured against death, I think we could probably have got to the top of Scotland if I'd ridden all night. But I think along the way, we've learned some important lessons. My ass can get really quite sore. Salad cream improves literally everything and a Yorkshire pudding makes for an excellent tortilla replacement. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe to Drive Tripe. I've been Tim Rohde. Thank you for watching and goodbye.